I don't believe in a rainy day fund. However, if you need to be able to sleep at night, you should have a rainy day fund. Rainy day fund will cost you money in retirement. Today, folks, literally any idiot that tells you you don't need a rainy day or an emergency fund has never been through a traumatic event in their entire pampered lives. Let's be real, whether it's health, family, job loss, like I went through in the March 2020 crash, it doesn't really hurt to put 10 or 20 grand aside. It's not gonna hinder your long-term investment retirement plans because trust me, traumatic events never happen at convenient damn times like the March 2020 dip, this current recessionary environment. You don't wanna pull against your investments when the markets are down. I don't know how this is still a discussion in 2023. I'm pretty sure most of us have figured this out by this point, or at least I hope you have. As today, we're gonna be diving down into my over $405,000 dividend stock portfolio. I'm gonna give you a full broad overview as it's now hitting all time highs, crushing it at the beginning of 2023. We're gonna review some of these individual ETFs, the stocks. I wanna talk about some earnings as well that came out of JP Morgan. We'll talk about Taiwan Semiconductors and the recent explosion in that stock that's printing for me. But firstly, I have to say thank you and shout out Travis. Travis, Rory, you are the first people to actually support me on my Patreon endeavor. And I'm going to be releasing a special video this weekend just for you guys about how I'm making $10,000 a month off my social media business in full transparency, along with some special live streams coming up next week. Stuff I will never talk about on this channel. So if you want to support me, and I think I'm offering 10x the value than the price that's in there, go support me on Patreon. I definitely appreciate it. But let's talk about the accounts here. Firstly, before we take the broad overview of my portfolio, because so many of you have been thanking me, acting like I know what I'm doing when I'm investing. I told you, I have no idea what I'm doing. Somehow not knowing has actually made me outperform Buffett, Kathy Wood, and all these YouTubers that are idiots in my opinion. But nonetheless, I just loaded up on Taiwan Semiconductors literally at the beginning of this year, dumping 15,000 US into it, which is now up 15 freaking percent. And I'm hoping... I don't know why people celebrate when it goes up. I'm not selling it. I want to keep buying it so it needs to come back down. I really thought it was going to come down and it didn't. I mean, you take a look at the technicals here, guys, and it really looked like we were heading into this continued downtrend that we've seen on every bump in the past. So we get lucky. Yeah, we made some money, but it's you make money when you buy, not when it goes up. So I want to see this come down. I still think it's a good value here, even at this price, because in the last earnings report, guys, $1.82 versus $1.77 expected on EPS, even though, you know, it's kind of crazy to think the stock's down 40% this thing's growing at 23.9% on revenue year over year, but they are going to be lowering guidance. They're expecting a 14% drop in Q1 of this year. So do keep that in mind because profit could take an even bigger hit. The firm projected its gross, gross profit margin will be around 55% compared to 62% over last quarter. But I still think this is a good buying opportunity like Warren Buffett, because I think the margin of safety is baked in. The company could see a 20 or 30% revenue and margin drop. And I still think it would be fair value if it did so. So like I said, that's why I've been buying it so damn aggressively. Now from JP Morgan, I don't own these US banks, but my God, what one hell of a buying opportunity in the last year, which I have mentioned when this thing bottomed out around here that if you're gonna buy a US bank, now would be the time. This thing is up like 30 to 40% from those lows. And for very good reasons too, this company has been crushing it. JP Morgan tops estimates for the fourth quarter revenue, but says mild recession is now kind of a central case. I mean, they did $3.57 per share versus the $3.07 that were expected. So absolutely crushed it. Even on the revenue front, they crushed it. Now, there's some interesting anecdotes coming from Jamie Dimon, literally the guy managing the largest bank in the US and probably one of the largest banks globally. But he says, we still do not know the ultimate effect of the headwinds coming from geopolitical tensions, including the war in Ukraine, the vulnerable state of energy and food supplies, a persistent inflation that is eroding purchasing power and has pushed interest rates higher, and the unprecedented quantitative tightening. I feel like that's very blanketed. And the only way we can actually see what's going on in the economy is by diving down into the consumer and community banking. I don't really care about corporate as much as I care about the consumer, you, me, the average person. And when we take a look at net revenue, it really gives a full clerical insight into the economy. From banking and wealth management, it's wild to think in the fourth quarter, it grew to 9.6 billion over this time last year, it was sitting at 6.1 billion, just staggering increase. But what's fascinating is home lending has fallen off a cliff. I think it's important to point out, especially in Canada, we've seen the volume of home sales dry up by over 50% percent, which was literally the pandemic like levels of uh, housing sales going on. And I don't know what that leads to in the long term. But my God, it is a true sign of a shift in housing. And we're seeing it in these revenues going from over a billion to pretty much dropping by 50% or maybe about 40% to 584 million car services and auto Elon Musk, a lot of people have been calling that there's going to be a significant decline in auto sales because interest rates go up. Most people finance uh, brand new cars, and that's really going to change the way they do so. 
So we're seeing companies like Tesla, especially in China, start cutting the price of their vehicles to continue to kind of sell them and get demand. But we can see that auto loans have actually increased uh, from 5 billion to 5.6 billion in revenue. And that might just due to the, be due to the increase of the interest rate environment over the last year. Not really sure, but very intriguing nonetheless. And then finally, we should point out that they have been dumping loan loss provisions aside like crazy. Loan loss provisions are how banks protect themselves from faulty debt or people defaulting. And they definitely increased it pretty dramatically to 1.84 billion over this time last year, where it was at like 1 billion. So there's obviously some fear baking into these banks as they try and back up and protect themselves, which is great for you as a shareholder, let's be real. But honestly, these earnings are mind blowing. TSM, JP Morgan giving us real clerical insight into what's likely to come for these large tech giants at the end of this month. I'm likely gonna see some slowed revenue, but probably still some growth. We're gonna be looking at revised earnings expectations. These companies are probably gonna lower their guidance coming into the 2023 as expected, but I'm really hoping that brings the market down because stocks are rallying on these earnings, guys. I wanna keep buying these at these crazy suppressed prices. I mean, that's the only reason that when the market bumps as little as it has at the beginning of this year, we're seeing my portfolio hit all time highs, 380,000 roughly fully invested at this point with 25,000 in cash. The portfolio, since I shifted and started reinvesting into these ETFs, some of these individual stocks here, I'm up, you know, $1,800 in the beginning of this year. The first time there's been green since I kind of readjusted my portfolio. And that's not even the coolest point. The cool thing is, is that this spreadsheet only updates once every 24 hours. I've been doing some shuffling, adjusting of the ETFs, buying TSM. And I didn't even realize that the dividends actually hit over a thousand a month or 12,000 annually. I even calculated it between all the individual accounts. And this is fairly accurate, but it also doesn't include the fact that I have 10,000 put aside in a high interest savings account, making me about two and a half percent. That doesn't get included in here. So we are actually over $12,000 annually in 2023 by primarily just buying broad-based ETFs. And that was a goal of mine that I achieved. It feels absolutely incredible. And I look forward to seeing how this will propel by cost averaging and just setting up a drip, the dividend reinvestment plan on these ETFs. I just want to take a moment and take a look at each one of these ETFs just to see how they've been performing at the beginning of 2023 and then give you some clerical insight into my plans kind of moving forward depending on what the market does but if you guys enjoy my portfolio tracker you want to support the channel go to portfoliospreadsheet.com link is also in the description below you buy one you get one for each platform for free we're still working on the excel version do be patient with me on that one use coupon code dividends you'll also get 30 percent off but nonetheless folks let's start off by taking a look at v Oh, oh, the S&P 500 index here is up 4.39%. That is absolutely astounding to see literally just within the first week and a half, two weeks of 2023, considering how abysmal the market's been. I kind of just threw out a funny statement that I think this is the bottom of the market. And I could be completely wrong, but I want to say it again and again, because if I'm right, I want to look like a genius so I can rub it in the face of all these doom and gloomer guys, right? Because it really looks like the markets may have bottomed out in October. Time will tell. We shall see. What do you think in the comment section below? SCHD, my favorite US dividend equity ETF that pairs wonderfully with VOO guys year to date is up 3%, so slightly underperforming the S&P 500. But again, when you look at a one year basis, it's crushing VOO and the S&P 500 actually pretty much being green if you've just been reinvesting the dividend that's over three and a half percent over that year. Taking a look at VDY, surprisingly of all my ETFs, the best performer. Who would have guessed? The Canadian markets, baby. This thing is my monthly paying Canadian dividend ETF, and it's up 4.71% year to date. Damn it. If that could just flatline for the rest of the year, I collect a 4% dividend. There's your 8 to 10% full return for the year. Ain't no one complaining, but I highly doubt that's what the markets are going to do because they never do what you want. Over the last year, this thing is pretty much flat with the dividend. So even though it's outpacing the S&P 500 over the last you know, year, I wouldn't state it as like the best performing ETF on a long-term basis because five years, I'm not really buying this for the growth aspect of it as much as I am as just that monthly income and a great place to cost average with the drip enrollment system. Now for the broad view perspective here, guys, I really don't expect this to continue if it does Hey, it's a blessing for those of you that are looking for gains. But for those of us that are sitting on cash that are still making good income from our jobs, I would love it. Absolutely, uh, you know, implore the markets to go down. I mean, that's the whole idea is I want to become a millionaire this year by investing in a completely suppressed market, knowing that by 2024, 2025, inevitably this technological jump where margins are expanding dramatically, McDonald's is automating. You know, we're going to see robotics take over many industries, including like chat, GBT, some of these AI 
specific programs. All this stuff is going to bake into incredible value for shareholders over the long term. And I think the markets deserve to be trading at a higher valuation, as I've stated many times in the past. To be seeing a PE on the general markets at 15 to 20, I think is honestly completely reasonable, considering we've never seen a time like this ever in market history. So if you're like me, guys, I'm really just going to be looking forward to maybe buying some more TSM for the time being, but praying that Apple, Microsoft, some of these big tech giants fall off, hopefully down to closer to a 15 PE, and I'll be very intrigued to buy them. But for now, I mean, sit back, enjoy the ride. It's intriguing that on my financial independence to one day retire early journey, that I'm actually outpacing much more of my early expectations. And I'm hoping you're seeing that as well. If you're diligent, you work hard, you stay out of debt, and you always make sure you have that damn emergency fund.